So when we have our Jabber client set up, let's say at the beginning, we're not in desk phone mode. We don't have a phone to control. Let's just focus on that first. If it's the Cisco Jabber in soft phone mode, then your registration will go ahead and take place and your video and audio will all be sent across via the PC. The PC will use as direct a connection as possible over to the other remote audio and video endpoint. Could be another PC, could be another Jabber client, might be a phone. We don't care. We're running in soft phone mode. It doesn't matter what that endpoint is, but just know that that video and audio is all going to be streaming from the physical client, whether it's a laptop or a desktop type computer. Now let's move into desk phone mode. So in desk phone mode, remember if the phone is not video capable, they call it video incapable, then we've got two things going on here. First of all, the desk phone mode is I call it smart enough to know, <laughs> we know behind the scenes, this phone is not video capable. So if we wanna have a video phone call, what are we gonna do? We'll have the audio portion, we'll be using that Cisco audio session tunnel protocol to set up the audio session and stream that over to the endpoint, whatever endpoint that is. And the video will be coming from our laptop or our desktop. So the Jabber client will be controlling video coming out of the PC or laptop again, and the audio will be streaming out via the phone. Again, it doesn't matter what this endpoint is, uh, as long as the endpoint is video capable. <laughs> so otherwise, mute point, right? If I'm sending you video and you can't see it, well, that's, you know, that's the end of game. But if that endpoint is video capable, then that's where those two video streams are coming from. Then the third option you might run into is the Jabber client in desk phone mode, but we have a video capable IP phone. So now the, basically the Jabber client, if we're not using it to, to stream out the audio and video, it's now offloaded that to the phone. So if this was a 9971 with the video uh, capability, the USB thing plugged into it, then all of our video and audio would be coming from the phone to whatever endpoint this was. And again, should be video capable otherwise, why send video uh, to the endpoint if it, if it can't receive it? So that's the three different main modes that you're going to run into with your Cisco Jabber client. To get logged into your Cisco Jabber client, let's kind of go out to mine that's sitting here behind the scenes. And we will go ahead and be able to see <laughs> the user address, right? It's, I have it saved. From a security standpoint, you shouldn't. <laughs> but it's got my test user and their uh, a password there. But if I needed to do anything as far as changing maybe what IP address this was registering with and, and so forth, if I click on advanced settings, we can see that this is involved in the I am in presence environment and it's using it. And the login server is pointing to my presence server, actually, that's doing the LDAP integration and so forth. But you would, you know, make sure that you filled in the proper account type credentials for this client. And then if you hit sign in at this point, you should be able to sign in and reach your uh, registered client database. And you can see this guy doesn't have any contacts or friends yet, but we successfully registered in to that I am in presence server. To test our video in our Jabber client, we can go over to our file options menu, look for video in advanced, and you'll see that we can test out our camera, make sure that, uh, again, it's pointed at the right spot, uh, the coloring is okay, you know, as best as it can be. It's not going to be perfect depending upon the lighting and so forth in your office, but at least you can know what it's going to look like uh, as it displays out to other people. If we want to fine tune our audio, let's go out to our little client here. We can go into our settings, file, options, pull this into range here and you have your audio settings so you can see we can fine-tune all of this we also have an advanced menu option where we can test out the speaker and the microphone kind of collapse that go back to the basics and 
again, just make sure that we're not blasting somebody in their ear uh, and, and so that we can hear too. A lot of times, you know, if it's so faint, we want to make sure that we test both the, you know, sound coming into our ear as well as what's going out. And make sure you check the positioning too of your microphone because you may want to make sure that whenever you have that microphone positioned, you try to position it in the same spot. That will help you out to have like continuous audio quality uh, when you're talking on the phone and so forth. So you don't want maybe one phone call, you've got it really close to your mouth and another phone call, it's far away. So first person's going, you're too loud. So you turn it down. Then the next person's like, I can barely hear you. So try to make sure that positioning uh, kind of stays within that same spot.